Good afternoon, my beautiful people. I hope everyone's having an amazing day. Today I'm filming a girl chat video. So we are going to be discussing a bunch of topics, a bunch of girl talk things that I just really want to get into. I'm kind of overdoing like tutorials and makeup stuff, even though my next video is probably going to be something along the makeup lines. But I'm happy to be doing a more chit chat video today. I'm going to be doing my makeup and getting ready. I asked you guys on Instagram to drop me some girl talk topics, questions, anything that you guys have going on, whether it comes to life, love, relationships, and just like anything that you're going through. Like today, we're gonna, just gonna take some girl talk time. I know we all need that once in a while. I also ran out of wine, so I'm drinking coffee, but whatever beverage you have, grab some snacks, grab something to eat. Or if you're getting ready, do your makeup with me right now. Before I get into it, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps me out so much when you guys like my videos. So go ahead and take one second, like this video, and while you're down there, you might as well subscribe and just join the Cassidy Secrets fam. It's lit over here. I am just gonna, before I get into the questions, just give you guys a little background on like what's going on with my life right now, like a little update. <laughs> Obviously, I've been posting my vlogs and you guys can see that there is a new boy. There is a boy. <laughs> I'm sorry I haven't like, I kind of just, I feel like I kind of just like threw that at you guys and like just started posting about him. I didn't give any background on like the fact that I'm, you know, like dating. I'm sure you guys can assume though. I was like, I've been single for a little while. Yeah, there's definitely been a change in my life because I am no longer single. The reason why I wanted to talk about this too is just the kind of things that we go through while transitioning uh, can be like really heavy but also really really helpful and beautiful and amazing and that's kind of what I wanted to come on here and talk about. I feel like as humans <laughs> we tend to be like once we're in a relationship it's just like okay this is my relationship this is my whole life and this is just like what my life is about now without kind of like acknowledging the journey that you might have went through before finding your relationship or you know the things that you appreciate about your single life or like the things that you went through on your own because um i think that part of the journey is so important prior to this relationship i was in a relationship for nine years so <laughs> that's a fucking long time right it started when i was super super young and you know it's just part of my story being in a relationship since you're 15 is like not an easy thing because you change so much and i kind of just started to get to a point where i was just like losing myself in my relationship just the, the reason why that relationship ended was because of the changes that i was going through and that the things that i needed for myself that i didn't feel like were able to be met in that relationship so with that being said without going too much into that once i got out of that relationship i became selfish in the most beautiful way you know like i i deserve this to myself i just i owe it to myself to give myself space give myself time give myself freedom for anything for fun for my own projects whether it be me all over social media or taking a break from social media like i went through all of those different phases and transitions and you guys that was one of the best things that i've ever done seriously like i'm not even trying to be dramatic but i look back and i thank myself all the time because although the, although that transition was one of the hardest things i ever did in my life it was so worth it it was actually the first time in my life that i put myself first i put my feelings and my needs first i spent a lot of time doing like self searching and and growing on my own and then i was able to have fun with it like i was able to date and have different experiences and get to know different people and just be single and like happy and have fun and i felt so lighthearted man you guys like the breath of fresh air that that gave me it's like unbelievable like you will not believe how amazing that was for me because i literally never had that time in my life the thing that i kind of like wanted to touch on a bit in this video is like i think a lot of the time as women we 
are often like kind of put this pressure on like once you find the love of your life once you find the man that you're in love with it's almost like you're not allowed to acknowledge your single life or like the life before your relationship and it's like i think that's such bullshit like the reason why i bring that up is because now that i am in a very new relationship and i am so so happy i love the fact that i'm still able to acknowledge the beautiful parts of my single life. Now, I feel like because I've given myself that freedom, it reflects in my current relationship. And I'm able to say like, wow, like I had so much fun when I was dating. I had so much fun when I was going out and trying different things. Like I genuinely had an amazing time and it's not an issue. It's not threatening. It's not like offending the other person. You know, it's just like that's that was my experience and I'm proud of that and I'm happy because I fought to be there I fought to have that freedom you know I fought for myself but yeah I kind of just wanted to touch on that with you guys yeah it's just nice I mean like I'm in a good place that I'm happy about so I went ahead and did my brows and then I put some lashes on I don't know the name of these lashes all I know is that they are by kiss lashes so now that i went ahead and aired out my life it's time to get into your guys lives okay <laughs> i asked you guys to give me girl talk questions or topics so now i'm gonna get into what you guys went ahead and asked me the first one that i have here is by cassandra clemente she asked how to move on without getting closure and to accept someone you love not being right for you those are some really heavy topics and definitely sort of part of like what I experience because oftentimes when you end relationships it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't love the person it just means like that that's not the right situation for you to be in like you're not living your best life in that situation and that can really be hard to accept because it's kind of like you're like well I know I love this person like this something has to be right like if I love them right but unfortunately that's just not always the case but what i will say is a good way to kind of accept that and just remind yourself is basically just asking yourself questions like why is this why is this not working why is this not right for me why what are the reasons that i know that this isn't the right situation for me to be in sometimes loving someone doesn't always mean that things go your way sometimes loving someone means accepting and respecting what they want for example if you love someone and they feel like they are going to be happier outside of the relationship try your best to respect that because love is not always about okay i love you now let's now do what i want you to do because this is like how love like do what you need to do to make me happy that's not always like love isn't a one-way street sometimes when you love someone you have to deal with the fact that they're not always going to want the same thing that you want you know and you have to want the best for them that's what i'm trying to say if you truly love someone sometimes you have to teach yourself how to want what's best for them, what best serves them, even if it's not serving you. I would say like if you're really struggling and this really hurts you, you should definitely um, allow yourself to feel that pain because it's not always easy and it's natural, you know? It's natural to be hurt by things not going your way sometimes or not, you know, when you're hopeful for something and it doesn't work out for you, it, it that really hurts. But what you can't do is try to control someone or try to control a situation or you can't control a relationship you'll make it through okay always have that attitude you will make it through this oh this is a good one okay your worst date oh my gosh you guys i have a good story for you okay this was actually my first tinder date i went on tinder <laughs> tinder um little backstory i'm not the type to be too picky when it comes to like men's height just because i'm already so short that most of the time everyone is already taller than me like i'm only 5'1 so <laughs> i'm not the type of girl that like i need a guy that's like six foot you know i'm just i've never really been like that just have that as a little background right I, I match up with this guy and i thought he was super cute and i was like okay like this could be nice we decided to go out on a date so he invites me out to this bar i was so nervous like oh my gosh and in his pictures he looked like 
pretty tall like he looked pretty tall right I get to the bar and I meet him and he like stands up from his chair and I was like oh hi like how are you and then he was my height you guys he was legit my height and like again like i said like in the past that's never been something that i'm too picky about when he stood up that was like the first time that i was kind of like oh it's not because he was short but it's because in his pictures he looked tall that was why i had that reaction i was just kind of like oh like that's not what i expected but it wasn't like a huge deal breaker but i was just like kind of taken aback that he didn't look the same height as his pictures <laughs> fine that was that we start talking and he had already been at the bar when i was there and then i just noticed like he looks drunk so he must have been there drinking trying to like loosen up to go on this date with me and i'm like this guy's fucking drunk. I'm sorry to me, like, listen, I am the first person to be like, I love to party, I love to drink and have a good time, but like, if you're first meeting a girl on a date and then the girl gets there and you're already like drunk, like, to me that's just a turn off. And I could really notice that he was drunk. And then on top of that, he buys me a drink, Mind you, this is my first Tinder date, so I'm like, I'm not fucking getting wasted. I'm not getting drunk. We don't need that. And then he's like, oh, you're babysitting your drink. You're babysitting your drink. And I'm just like, no, I'm not. Like, no, like, I'm fine. Like, this is... This is, I'm good, honey. And then he's like, oh, come on, like, hurry up, finish up, let's, so I can get you a second drink. And like, he was just being so pushy about me drinking. Then you guys, this is what did it for me. Like, I'm starting to notice his hands. I'm the type of girl that I look at guys' hands. Like, that's something that I've just always looked at. Like, I need to have a man with clean hands, nice nails. Biting your nails is the biggest number one turn off. If I meet a guy that bites his nails, like, I'm sorry, I can't. It was not just, like, he bit his nails. It was legit. His nails were down to the skin and not only was his his entire nail bitten off all of the skin around his fingers was like all peeled like he just chewed up his freaking hands and just like oh my god i was so turned off by that like i was just like Ugh. it was so gross to me by this point in the day i'm just like i need to get the Fuck out of here he's like oh you're not gonna have a second drink i'm like no no like it's time i, I have to go home like i live really far blah, 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 all the excuses right he's like oh yeah I'll, I'll i'll walk with you so fine we like walk out of the bar together and then we walk down the block he's like oh do you want me to call an uber for us i'm like call an uber for us he's like yeah you should just come to my house i like, come to my place and i'm like what and then i was like uh i said it like just like this i was like mm, that's not happening and then he was like oh come on like ew he tried to like persuade me into it that was not it i think i went on like one tinder date after that and then i was just like done i'm not doing this anymore that was the worst experience for me and i feel like it wasn't even that bad like i feel like some girls have so much worse experiences jessica yakubov says asks how did you know to walk away from a long-term boyfriend sometimes feels like it's not sometimes it feels like it's you not the relationship wow i relate to that so so much yeah that's honestly exactly how i felt in the long-term relationship that i was in i felt like there was something wrong with me and it wasn't the relationship that feeling that that that's like oh sometimes it feels like it's just me and it's not the relationship well you have to understand that you are in that relationship so you're part of it you know you are that relationship to some extent it's not just kind of like this relationship is a being of itself like you you make up that relationship so if something in you is not happy in that relationship whether it's long term or short short term you need to know when to listen to yourself the way that you know i think is like when you're not with that person and you don't really miss them or when you're not with that person and you kind of are having a better time than you would when you're actually with that person i think those are huge signs to take um to know when to leave you know and at the same time you don't want to waste anyone else's time because if you still love that person you still care about that person you want them to have a chance at finding something real and something better than what you're giving them you know this one by x francisca xo says i want to start my own business but i am too hesitant to do it what do you recommend okay 
I recommend, this is something that I do when it comes to my business or my work, like whatever I'm doing. Something that I feel like discourages me is when I don't know how to do something. Like when I have no idea what I'm doing, which is like, when you start anything, you kind of don't know what you're doing. Like you kind of have to just throw yourself into something you don't know what you're doing and just like play with it and learn along the way. But I would say my first step to get yourself started would be Google. Literally Google is your best friend. Let's say you're, you're getting discouraged because you're like, oh, I don't know how to start a website. Literally go on Google how to start a website. Put in the most random question. Whatever question or whatever doubt is in your head, put it on Google. Ask Google. And then I don't I don't say that because I'm saying that you're going to find the exact answer that you want to find, but I say that because the more you start reading, you start reading different things, different experiences. Don't take everything for like exactly what it is and like that's going to work for you. But the more you start reading, you start to learn. Like you pick up one little thing from one source, another little thing from another source, and then all of a sudden you find yourself even more motivated because it seems more possible. So that's why I say go to Google because that's when you get the motivation. You're like, oh, this person did this and this person did this. Well, I can put this together. And then all of a sudden you just find yourself like with this jump inside of you. So whatever question you have, like research it online. And that's what I do when I start to feel discouraged. I'm like, oh, I don't know how to like create an LLC. Google, how do I create an LLC? Like there are so, we live in an era where we literally have so much information at our fingertips. It's actually insane. So I think just use that to your advantage and take inspiration. Issa knows asks, how do you manage your personal life and your love life? Having them separate, but still having them at the same time. I'm having a hard time doing both. That's definitely like a huge concern. I feel like for a lot of young people, like um, we have so much going on, I feel like. My best advice for that would be ask yourself what you want more of, what you want more time of. There are some times where I feel like I'm not dedicating enough time to work. And I'm like, oh, I wanna work more, but then I feel like, oh, I have to hang out with my boyfriend or like I have to hang out with my parents. Like I need, I just need to silence all of that. Like prioritize your time and ask what do you want more of? Balancing everything in life is hard whether you have a relationship or not. Whether it's school, family time, studying, working on passion projects, doing just hobbies that you like. Balancing those things is extremely, extremely difficult even when there's not a relationship involved. So throw a freaking relationship into that shit and it's like, it's difficult. Figure out what's missing first. Like what do you want more time of? What do you want less time of? The first step is to ask yourself those questions what do you want more of what do you want to balance out more and then like use that kind of like layout to express your needs to everyone around you if they love you and and they know that you're trying to balance things out they will understand sometimes it might feel a little uncomfortable or scary to tell my partner you know like oh i i don't really want to hang out this weekend because i want to focus more time on reading or meditation those are things that are important to you. And if that person loves you, they will try their best to understand. All right, I'm gonna do like two more questions. I finished my makeup. <laughs> um, going to chill in the sala because you know my ass is staying home. Oh, this is a good one. It says birth control. Which one do you recommend? Did your body change, etc. So I think this is a great topic for girl talk. Hello. I was on birth control for, I would say about six months when I was 20 years old. I'm 26 now. It didn't have any like weight gain effects on me or like skin effects. It didn't have any things like that. It definitely had hormonal effects and um, I had zero zip, no zero, 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 negative, zero, negative, negative, negative sex drive when I was on birth control. <laughs> You couldn't even look at me when I was on birth control. I was just like, I, and that's very unlike me, I will say, but I just had no, I had no sex drive. That was the major thing that like I noticed more than anything else is just that I didn't, I was like so just grossed out by everything, by my own body. And it was like, what a time, like not, not good, period, done with that. So yeah, that was the only time that I was on birth control. Now I am not on birth control and I will never go on birth control again just because I don't think that it's 
good for my body like I think birth control it's just not it's not a good option for me I feel like I can't I don't like the effects that it has I don't I've heard stories of like people that have women that have been on birth control for years and then when they finally want to have a baby it's like super difficult for them to get pregnant and that's just not something that I'm willing to put my body through but that doesn't mean that I'm against birth control. I think if any woman wants to be on birth control, I think you should absolutely do what you feel is is right for you. Uh, my form of protection right now is I just use condoms. That's the way I protect myself from getting pregnant and everything else that comes along with having sex with someone, so period. <laughs> How to start dating again after a long relationship. That's by All About Elise. Baby girl, do it when you're ready. Don't let nobody rush you. Don't give yourself any timeline. If you want to go two, three years without dating, do that. Like, don't let anyone tell you what you need to do. You know, like, d don't, don't feel the pressure to start dating right away to distract yourself either. Like, you just have to do what feels right. When I was single, there were times where I was like, wanted to date. Like I wanted to go on dates, go on dates, go on dates. And then there were periods where I'm like, I just want everyone to leave me the fuck alone. Like, leave me alone, period. Don't talk to me, don't look at me, don't breathe near me, just that's it. And then other times I was like, welcome boys to The Bachelor. <laughs> Whatever feels right for you, just follow that. And I'm telling you, through that, you'll have the best experiences. When you know you're not forcing it, that's when you have like the best experiences. Okay, you guys, so I hope I answered a bunch of your really good and juicy questions. I also hope that you guys took this video to like get to know me more or get to get a little insight of my life and where I'm at right now. Stay home, stay safe you guys. I hope you guys are having the best day ever. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel because you know how much it means to me from the bottom of my heart. I love you guys so, so, so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Mwah!